Now, the lips and the tongue posture play an important role as well. If you, any of you are thinking of having a child, or have a child at the moment that's about weaning point now, you must read this book, Baby Led Weaning. I think we're messing things up greatly, giving our kids soft foods, weaning them too early. What's happening is we're giving them food that they can suckle before they're ready to stop suckling. And we never make that progress from an infantile suckle to an adult swallow. Consequently, most of us, I estimate 85% of us, have a modified infantile swallowing pattern right the way up through our lives. Everyone with big cheeks, big chubby cheeks. Those are cherubic. Babies have cherubic cheeks. Adults have hollow cheeks. And as the face is heading south, the lips are trying to hold everything in if you keep them together. And the tongue is trying to hold everything up and out. Of course, a lot of variations. A lot of people don't keep their lips together. And there's a consequence. And a lot of people have these arrogant swallowing patterns. Now, here I describe, you forget the lips. And then the cheek is supposed to be a complete band that goes around just in front of the spine, round the back with the constrictor muscles. And it's making a circle. And within that circle, the tongue is supposed to hold everything else up, and the um, lips hold everything in. Now, we sometimes think lips are the same, um, don't change, but lips are muscles. And as Arnie Schwarzenegger will tell you, lips are changeable. And because they're changeable, a girl at 13, a girl at 13, to 33 does not grow, but lips can change. Now, here's an interesting experiment that Hillary's kindly demonstrating for us. It was an experiment done by Peter Vig. He got some students, he put a clove peg on their nose. Now, you could try that yourself. The instant thing you have to do is open your mouth to breathe. Now, if you really open your mouth wide, you'll notice it's a little uncomfortable on your breathing. And since your breathing is the most important thing in your life, what you're then going to do is tip your head back a little bit. And then as Marcotte said earlier on, that doesn't feel sensible. So then you tip your head forward to keep it upright. And in effect, we've gone from here to here. And this is seeming the modern condition. So can we affect it? Yes. We can affect it. This is what I do. This is what I do with children. I attempt to do this. I can't say I am always get a great success. I can't say it's easy. I can't say much of it. But what I do know is people like her have a lot of general health problems, and they get crooked teeth. You see, her face has grown longer. If you've only got so much growth, if from here the jaw joint to here is genetic, and it's hinged down, your face has dropped down, then it's going to get narrower, it's going to get shorter, you're going to get crowded teeth, because you only have so much space, and it's crushed in. And if you straighten someone like her's teeth up, they're not going to stay straight. Someone like her has naturally straight teeth, don't worry about it. Why straighten them? Because when we straighten them, they don't tend to stay straight anyway. Um, we talk about orthotropics as my concept, which is correcting growth rather than orthodontics that straightens the teeth. What I do with ear treatment is I make the, sp the space for the tongue a lot bigger. I make a rather strange pattern of dental alignment. I then use a brace that has fangs that stick down. And it's converting people with this vertical growth to this horizontal growth. Because we have that horizontal growth, you have the space for the teeth, and the face looks better. These fangs engage in the, the jaw. And what this does means when the jaw drops down, the fangs touch. And here's fangs in the mouth. And there's an example of where they touch down inside the jaw. And here's a set of identical twins. Now, what's interesting about this identical twins, that this one here, which was probably the worst, if you look at the jaw position, was treated by an eminent orthodontist in the area. 
This one was treated by my father, and I think the results speak for themselves. You can change facial growth. You can change facial beauty. It is possible. I don't say it's easy, but it's possible. My concern with orthodontics is it will give you straight teeth, but frequently it doesn't help the face out much. Orthodontics always makes faces longer. I would recommend if you're thinking of orthodontics to lay it as long as possible. I mean, you're all adults. It's easier now. You're less susceptible to these change. Avoid extractions and avoid retractive. Anything that pulls it back, avoid. Now, of course, we've always got people like Catherine Zeta-Jones. She had teeth taken out. She had the spaces closed. But damn it, she wasn't gonna, her tongue wasn't going to let the teeth be pulled back. So she overcame the assault of orthodontics on her. And that's often the case. Because if it's the environment causing the problem, you're in charge of your environment and you can change your environment. Now, you go, so what? You've got straight teeth. What effect does it have on you? What effect does this lengthening of the face have on you? I mean, someone here who has gone, what, seven medals he's got with a long face. He's an exception. I wouldn't say he's not going to be affected at some point in his life, but you don't get medals if you're badly affected. It's interesting to me that all of these 100-meter runners, nearly all of them have great facial development and usually have straight teeth naturally. It's a, a point of interest. But, of course, we've got lots of associated symptoms happen. You know, when we, uh, we oh, oh, dear me, the wrong one again. Uh, we talked about um, malocclusion, we won't do that. But breathing problems, most ENT problems, jaw joint problems, upper neck and back problems, adenoid faces and less attractive faces from having long faces. I don't say this is scientifically proven, but I think you'd find it hard to disprove them. And they're good scientific observations. When you snore, your tongue falls back against the back of your throat. With sleep apnea, which is very related to snoring, and in fact, they're often saying snoring today is sleep apnea tomorrow. And so I think sleep apnea is going to come up just like asthma did from nowhere to become a very prevalent situation, as it already is coming up. Now, um, the most important sign if you're going to get sleep apnea, the most significant measurement is from the back of the pharynx to where the tongue inserts and genioglossus insertion behind the mouth of the mandible. Now, it, the shorter that is, the more likely you are to get sleep apnea. Longer and thinner your face, the more likely your tongue is to get pushed back into your throat. And you can see here, the tongue being pushed back into the back of the throat because the distance from there to there is shortened, that's more likely to happen, more likely to get sleep apnea. Of course, there's lots of answers for breathing and sleep problems. I, one of the ones I really don't recommend is these appliances. For as much as it will pull your bottom jaw forward to help with the breathing, it's going to pull your top jaw back, which is the heart of the problem in the first place. 